What's up guys, this is iTweaks here with iPhoneHacks.com and today I decided to go ahead and put together a top jailbreak tweaks video for the iPad. Now in this video I'm going to be using the iPad Air but this is obviously going to work with the iPad mini as well. So there's a lot of tweaks that we're going to be covering in this video so let's go ahead and get started. So the first tweak I want to talk to you guys about is called OXO2. Now if you guys haven't heard of OXO, it's basically a really awesome app switcher and I even like OXO2 better on the iPad than I do on the iPhone just because there's a whole lot more real estate and everything spread out a little bit more and, and it seems like everything fits a little bit better on the iPad. So you can see right here if I go ahead and activate our app switcher, you can see that we get the original app switcher right up here and then we also have the control center integrated into our app switcher. So we have our brightness slider, airdrop, airplay, your volume, media controls, as well as all your toggles right here. So this looks really nice and it's very intuitive. You can see right here if we want to bring down an application or open it up, you can just swipe down with your finger just like that and it has that nice little animation. Also if we want to close all the applications out, you can easily just swipe up right here and then tap to close all apps right there and it's going to close out of all your applications right there in one fail swoop. You also have a really cool feature with OXO2 and that's if you enable the quick switcher which is basically just swiping up on your uh, corner of your iPad right there and you can swipe through all of your applications just like that. So really cool tweak. Now keep in mind I'm going to be showing you a glimpse of all these tweaks. I'll give you a good idea of what these do but if you want a real in-depth look at all of these tweaks that I'm going to be showing you today then make sure to check the links in the description below because I've probably done a complete review of each of these tweaks so you can get an in-depth look at those. So the next tweak I want to talk to you guys about is called Activator. So if we swipe over here to Activator, right here, and we open that up, basically what this is going to do is allow you to assign gestures and make that gesture perform an action. So to give you an example right here, if we wanted to uh, make this gesture anywhere, so we can do this gesture on any portion of our device, to, doesn't matter where we are, within the application, on the lock screen, on the springboard, you can see if we do a five finger pinch, what we're going to do is go all the way down here to compose a new mail. So we're going to go back and do a five finger pinch just like that and it should automatically compose a new mail. Easy as that. So that's what Activator does. There's a ton of different things that you can do with this tweak. Highly recommended and it should be a staple in every jailbroken device. Next tweak I want to talk to you guys about is called Pro Widgets. Now what this is going to do is allow you to put these widgets directly on your springboard that you can snap into place, resize, and actually use on the fly. So you can see right here if I just do some gestures, you, all you have to do is make sure that you set these up in Activator. So I just set up an Activator method for the Messages widget to be a swipe down on the right side of the screen. So we're just going to move that over here and we're also going to resize the application just like that. Now if we swipe up, you're going to see that we got a new mail widget right here. So we're just going to double tap and that's going to go directly right there, but you can rearrange them as well. So if I go over here, swipe down, let's swipe up. And you can see we have the alarm one. Now the cool thing about this is you can minimize these, you can stack them over one another just like that. And then whenever you want to get rid of them, you can just double tap on them, they're going to delete. Now if you want to actually interact with these widgets, then you would just tap on it, open it up, and then you can type in whatever you'd want. You can send a mail very easily just like that. So let's go ahead and open up some more right here. So we have the alarm, let's close that. Looks like I accidentally opened up Facebook here. So we're going to close out of Facebook real quick. And let's swipe across just like that. So here's our browser. So if we wanted to go to a website here, we would just type something in just like iphonehacks.com, click go, and then it's going to automatically open this up directly in a widget. And then again, just go ahead and minimize it and then it's out of the way. Again, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with pro widgets. If you want to see a full in-depth review, make sure you check in the description for a link to that video. So the next tweak I want to talk to you guys about is called Cleverpin. Now one of the things that Cleverpin does is allow you to deactivate your passcode when you're on a known network. So you can see right here, if I go back to my lock screen and we open that up, you can see if I swipe over, I have a passcode. So if I go ahead and open up and go into the settings here, and now I'm going to toggle on connected to network. And then I have my network assigned right here. So that means that I don't have to type in my passcode anymore. So let's go ahead and go to the lock screen. And then when I swipe across, you can see that it automatically unlocks. So again, this is called Clever Pin, and it's nice to have set up for your home network. 
So the next tweak I want to talk to you guys about is called CC controls. So you can see right here, if I swipe up on my control center, you'll see some new buttons right here. Now, a lot of people have this tweak as well. It's a very popular tweak. So you can see right here, as I swipe through, there are a ton of different toggles that you can choose from. So if we wanted to kill all the applications, then we can just tap this button. It would close out all of the applications running in the background. If we wanted to activate our uh, app switcher, then we would just tap right here, and it's going to automatically activate the app switcher. So there's a ton of different stuff that you can do right here. If we wanted to swipe down to CC controls and open that up you'll see that you have theming options you have lock screen restrictions advanced settings and then right below that you have your enabled uh, toggles as well as all of your disabled toggles so if you want to put one down here to disable it then you can easily do so so multitasking is gone so now if we just swipe up and we swipe all the way over to the left you can see that the multitasking toggle is gone so a lot of really helpful toggles in CC controls definitely recommend checking this out next up we have a tweak called by font 2 now what this is going to do is allow you to change your font system wide so you can see right here that the labels under my icon have changed fonts and you can do this all within by font 2 now one thing to keep in mind while you're looking for by fonts or fonts for by font 2 you want to make sure that you're downloading the fonts for by font 2 and they'll usually say that this is for by font 2 or by font 1 so you can see right here if we open up Cydia the easiest way to look for these fonts is to just go back let's close out of that and we're gonna to go to sources and then we're gonna to go to mod my eye and then we're gonna scroll down here to fonts which says by the font too so we're gonna open that up and then these are all of your fonts so you can see that we just tap on this and you can look at screenshots and they'll give you a view of what these uh, fonts actually look like looks like this one doesn't let's scroll down here to just a few of these and you can see what these fonts look like so the way that you use this, I've actually downloaded a font called Architect's Daughter. So you can see that it changes everything up. It changes completely uh, every text that's on your device. It changes to this font. So you can see right here, if I swipe over to by the font 2 and open it up, this is how you're going to set it up. You'll just want to, you can browse within this as well, but I found the most useful place is within Cydia. But if you want to actually set one up and enable it, then you would just tap on basic right here, and then you would select the font. So all your fonts that you've downloaded will be right here. So if you tap right here, it's going to say, are you sure you want to proceed? This is basically going to set it back to the original font. Now, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to tap no, but you will have to respring your device every time that you change font. So again, by the font 2, this is going to allow you to change your font system-wide on your device. Here we have a tweak that everybody knows and loves, and it's called Zeppelin. And what this is going to do is change your carrier logo to basically whatever you'd like. You can see right here that I have a Batman symbol right there. And you can change this up. There's a ton of different things or themes or logos that you can download within Cydia for Zeppelin. But you can see right here, this is what's going to come with its stock. So if we open this up, you can see that we have all of these themes or these logos. You have the Abstergo, Android, Aperture Science, Apple, Assassin's Creed. There's our Batman, Nike. You can even put nothing up there. You even have the Triforce right there. So you can basically set this up however you'd like, and there's no respring required. So you can see if I tap on Apple, boom, it already automatically changes. So a lot of cool themes or logos right there for Zeppelin. And if you want to download more, then just look for those in Cydia. Next up, we have a tweak called Controllers for All. Now, what this tweak is going to allow you to do is use a controller on your device to play games. Now, this is going to support a lot of different controllers. In this video, I'm going to be using the PS3 controller, and it's very simple to set up. All you need to do is download a software program called Six Pair, and then just plug in your iPad as well as your controller into your Mac or your PC, and then follow the instructions for there. It's it's literally just a click of a button and it pairs the two devices and then once you do that just make sure that you enable uh, controllers for all in the settings and then we're gonna go into a game right here and you'll see that we get a little pop down or banner that says initializing Bluetooth and now it's searching for a controller press the PS button so all you gotta do is hit the PS button and we're connected to a controller so now all we need to do you can see that I'm just using the controller right here to actually play this game it's as simple as that. There's not a whole lot of setup for this. You can see that I'm using this completely with the controller right here. And I don't have to actually touch the iPad or anything like that. So highly recommend checking this out if you're into gaming on your iPad.
Next, we have a must-have tweak called Winterboard. Now, if you don't have Winterboard, then you're not gonna be able to theme your icons, and if you're jailbroken, one of the main things to do to your device is change the look and feel. So with Winterboard, all you need to do is just go into Cydia, download Winterboard, which is right here, and then you can actually start downloading themes to accommodate your taste and change what you want your device to look like. So we would just tap on select themes and then here are all my themes right here. The one I'm actually using is called Iris. So if you wanna download that, it's spelled A-Y-E-R-I-S and it basically just changes the look of your icons. So if you're a fan, definitely check it out. Next, we have a tweak called Video Pane. Now this is really helpful, especially on the iPad. It does work on the iPhone, but in my opinion, it just works better on the iPad because you have more real estate. But if you see right here, if we go into YouTube, and we're gonna start playing a video here, and it's going to allow us to detach that video and then keep it on our springboard. So let's just go and start to play this video right here. And then we should get a pop-up right here that says detach current media into video pane. So just tap detach, and then we're gonna have a small media player that's going to play this video right here. So if we hit the home button, you can see that we still have the video right here. And then you can just move this wherever you'd like to and it snaps into place, just depending on where you have it, just like that. And if you wanna go full screen, then you can do so just like that. And then you can start playing it again. And you can also resize the windows on your springboard. You can just pinch to zoom just like that. And to dismiss it, just double tap. Next up, we have a tweak called barrel. So you can see right here that my page animation can change very easily and this is just the cube inside but you can change there's a ton of different ones that you can use you can use uh, page slide down I'll show you that one right here and if we go back we have cube outside this is kind of one of my favorites you can see that it kind of cubes outside there's kind of a big gap right there uh, on the iPad so it doesn't look quite as good as it does on the iPhone but there's still a ton of different animations that you can change to just by going into the settings here and selecting it as you can see right there so definitely check out barrel if you want to change up the way that your uh, iPad page animations look next up we have a tweak called swipe selection pro so let's go ahead and open up something that we can type something on and this is pro widgets once again now if we start to type stuff usually we're going to make spelling errors or mistakes or maybe we want to change something up how it sounds or what it says now the easiest way to do that is by downloading Swipe Selection Pro. So you can see right here, if we swipe across on the space bar, you can actually place that cursor wherever you'd like. Also, if we hold the Shift key and swipe across, it's actually going to highlight all that text, and you can just delete that if it's just gibberish and you don't want it there anymore. Now, you can actually set this up in the settings to do a few different things. So let's go ahead and jump into the settings here, and you can see this is a Swipe Selection settings panel so make sure that obviously you have this enabled you also have the option to triple tap the shift key which is going to toggle on uh, swipe selection on or off so you can just toggle that on right there right below that you're gonna have your swipe area so I have it set to just the space bar right now the default is the whole keyboard and then right below that or in the middle you can see it's everything but the space bar so you can set that up however you'd like going down once again we have sensitivity so you can do this from normal reduced to insensitive just depending on your preference and you also have your swipe speed from slowest to fastest right there and then you also have the three finger swipe which is preferable to be only used on the iPad just because there's a little more real estate for this and what this does is allow you to go to the beginning of the document or to the end of the document so if you do a lot of typing on your iPad then definitely check out swipe selection pro Next up is iFile, which I highly recommend just because it's gonna give you access to all the files on your device. So you can see right here, if we go into iFile, it's going to open right up. Now, this is where you're going to be able to navigate through certain paths to get to everything that basically makes up the OS on your device. So let's for instance say that we wanted to install a brand new theme, but we have to do it manually. So the easiest way to do it is just back all the way up right here, and then we're gonna scroll up here and tap on library. Once you tap on library, then we're gonna scroll down to themes, open that up, and then here are your themes. So once you've copied that theme to manually install, all you need to do is tap edit, and then paste that in just by hitting the little paste button right here. So really it's as simple as that. But that's not the only thing that you can do with iFile. You can do an endless amount of things, but just make sure that you're careful of what you're doing and you know what you're doing before you do it because deleting specific plist files or 
just a lot of the different files can actually break your device. So make sure you know what you're doing before you mess with it. Flux is another really nice tweak that's going to allow you to browse on your device at night without actually hurting your eyes. So it makes it a whole lot easier on your eyes. You can see right here, if we enable this, this is only a, an iPhone application, so it doesn't actually uh, go into landscape mode right here. But you can see that if we enable Flux, and we take this down, it actually gives an orange tint to the entire uh, screen. And it's actually a whole lot nicer to use at night. So if you haven't tried this out, I highly recommend it. It's definitely worth the time to download this for free. Another app that I use a lot on my jailbroken iPad is iCleaner. So if we go right here and we tap clean, it's going to automatically start cleaning up all the unused files on my device. Now you can obviously set this up to go into specific areas or not go into specific areas. So you can set this up however you'd like, but I have mine set up to the default and you can see right here, uh, it's about to finish up and then it's gonna tell me how much space it's actually cleared up. So it does pop up a little ad right here that you always have to close out of. And then it freed up 154 megabytes of space, which is not a whole lot, but it is still quite a bit for a 16 gig iPad. Once it's done, it's going to automatically respring. InfiniDoc is another really cool tweak that's going to allow you to put as many applications as you want right there in the dock. So you can see right here, if we just start to drag these down, you can see that they just go right in and then you can actually scroll through. So you can put as many applications as you want into your dock just like that. So definitely worth checking out. Now if we go into our settings here and we scroll down, to InfiniDoc, I'll show you some of the settings you have. You have icons per page, you can change that up from one all the way to 10. You have the scrolling bounce enabled, so if you're swiping across and you don't have any more applications, then it's gonna kind of bounce back and forth. You also have a scroll, scroll bar style, so you have your white, your black, or disabled, which is basically just gonna put a little scroll bar on there. We'll actually turn that on right now, just for you guys to see what that's like. You can also start this at a specific page if you want to, if you have paging enabled. And then right below that, you have your scrolling, which is obviously something that we want. And we have paging, so turning that on is going to snap across each page. And you have your scrolling snap, so it's going to snap across. So we'll turn those both on. So again, if we swipe across, we actually don't have any more applications in there. Let's put a few right there. And now when we swipe across, it's gonna page all the way over and snap across just like that. And it's actually really hard to see, but there is actually a scroll bar right down here and you can kind of see it moving across as I move my finger. Next up, we have a tweet called Nitrous. Now it's kind of hard to show you this side by side just because I only have one iPad at the moment, but what this does is allow you to unlock the faster Nitro JavaScript JIT compiler that is normally reserved for the Apple's stock apps on iOS devices. So this is actually supposed to dramatically improve the JavaScript performance in web-oriented apps like Chrome, Facebook, Twitter, Alien Blue. I mean, it's even up to four to five times faster speeds. So this is a 99 cent tweak that you can check out in Cydia. Next up, we have a tweak called Sidget. Now what this tweak does is you can see if we go into our settings here and we scroll down to our Sidget uh, settings, which you actually have right here, and we tap on lock Sidget order. You can see right here, these are all the Sidgets that we have installed. Now you can select multiple of these, but right now the only one that I have uh, active right now is Typo 5. Now if you activate or deactivate any of these, then you're gonna have to respring your device. So I have Typo 5 enabled, so you can see right here what it does if we go to our lock screen and we come back, you can see that it adds this nice Sidget right there on the lock screen. It says, guess what, it's Sunday, the 13th of July, at 15:55 p.m. So this is just a nice looking Sidget for your iPad. Sometimes it's a little hard to find Sidgets for your iPad, but this is a good one, and you actually have to add a repo in order to get this. And I'll put the link in the description below for you guys to just add that repo. And then this one is called Typo5. So definitely check it out. Next up, we have a tweet called OS Experience. Now this is a $10 tweet, so you definitely wanna check out the full review that I did of this tweak when it was released right in the description below. So I'm not gonna be able to get through all of the features in this tweak, but I'm gonna show you a quick rundown of what this can do. It basically changes the entire way that you use your device. So you can see right here that we don't have any applications on the springboard, all we have is our dock. But if we do a five finger pinch, 
then here are all of our applications. So you can open those up from right there. Now if we do another five finger pinch, you can see that those go away. Now this is where all of your windows are gonna be. So if we do a four finger swipe up, then you can see that we can have multiple desktop instances. So this is our first step desktop, and if we wanna add another one, then we would just tap the plus, and you can see that we can add up to five different desktops. Now, if you want to choose your desktop, you can obviously just tap on them right there, or you can swipe across and select them that way. Now, if we wanted to open up an application, let's say we were gonna open up Safari. So we open that up, and here it is right here up at the top. So now we're gonna bring that down just by swiping down with four fingers. And now if we wanted to actually resize or put this on another desktop, you can see all we have to do is swipe down with four fingers. And you can see we get a little title bar right here. So we can either close out of the application or we can minimize it. So if we tap the minimize, you can see that it goes into a window mode. And then we can move this around right here. Now you can also resize it just by tapping and holding and swiping your finger up or down right here on the full screen. Or if you just tap that, then it's gonna go directly to a full screen. Again, four finger swipe down, tap on that. And then if we do a four finger swipe up, it's actually gonna to go to our desktop view. Now let's say that we wanted to move this window to another window or another desktop. All you would do, tap and hold, drag it over. And then when we swipe over to our second desktop, we can bring that down and there it is right there. Now let's say we wanted to open up two separate applications at the same time and multitask with them. Okay, so now we have iFile open, so we're gonna do a four finger swipe down, we're gonna tap on minimize, and then we're gonna put this iFile on that same desktop, so the desktop two. So we're gonna swipe up with four fingers, we're gonna pull it over to desktop two, swipe over, four fingers swipe down, and then we can see how this works. You can pull this all the way over to the left and it's going to go into portrait mode and then snap into place to half of the screen. Again, you can do the exact same thing with iFile and you can see how this works. Now, you can actually use these side by side. So if we wanted to go to Apple and we're just gonna say we're gonna be scrolling through our iFile right here, you can actually scroll on both of these at the exact same time. So this is a huge plus for all of you hardcore multitaskers. But really this tweak has a lot of things that you can do with it and there's a ton of features and I highly recommend checking out the full review in the description below. Next up we have a tweak called Spring to Mize 3. Now what this tweak does is basically give you the ability to package all of those singular tweaks into one extremely large tweak. So this is gonna give you a ton of different things that you can do to your device. So you can see right here if we tap on animations, then you can see that we can actually change the page scrolling animation just like we can with barrel. So you're gonna have all these different animations. Now you will have to respring your device in order for these changes to take effect, which is kind of a bummer. Also another bummer is that Spring to Mice 3 only works in portrait mode. I think that should be a crime that it doesn't work in landscape mode on an iPad, but I digress. Right here we have App Slider, which is basically Spring to Mice 3's name for the app switcher. And you can see right here that you can hide the icons if you wanna do that. You can resize the pages of the app switcher. Right here we have the home action, so you can change what the home action does. So you can actually make it respring if you wanna do that. Right here you have the ability to change how inactive apps are handled. So if you tap on that, you can darken them, blur them, hide them, or just leave them as default, which is uh, basically what I do. Now, of course, there's a ton of different things to cover with Spring to Mize 3, and I'm not gonna go through every single thing that you can do with this just because I think I have a 20 minute video on this. So if you wanna check out everything that Spring to Mize does, and I mean every single thing, I go through all of it, then definitely check out the link in the description below, and you can see everything for yourself. So you guys asked for a top tweak video for the iPad, so here it is. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below. And if you guys have any other ideas for new videos or what you guys want to see, then let me know in the comments below as well. Alright guys, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you want to see more of my videos, then go ahead and subscribe. Alright guys, until next time, this is iTweaks with iPhoneHacks.com.